both of the languages, integer takes four bytes of memory. But if we add short in front of integer in C++, the size of integer goes down to two bytes. In this, the short keyword represents a value between minus 32,000 to 32,000. Adding a short is one of the manual memory management techniques done in C++. While in Python, memory allocation or deallocation is done automatically. Look at this code. First, we assign one to a variable named x, and this variable is taking four bytes of memory. But if we assign the string xyz to the same variable, then the memory occupied by the same variable will change. However, if you want to do the same in C++, you have to do it manually or define a variant that can hold either an integer or a string, or just give type any to a variable. This means in Python, you don't have to write anything extra, but this leads to a downside, which is you don't have full control over memory management, while C++ provides full control over it. So both the languages have their own pros and cons. But before that, do you know that Python is a dynamic language while C++ is a statically typed language? Therefore, variables can change types freely in Python, as we have seen in the example. And that also means memory size adjusts automatically as needed. But this is only good while you are writing code. Once the code starts running, it gets heavy with memory. Then comes garbage collection, which is used for memory deallocation. But the thing is, that garbage collector itself consumes resources, both in terms of CPU time and memory. So you come to clear memory, and then you become the memory. And to remove you, we need to bring another you. But that's not the main problem. This CPU and memory usage are temporary. But the garbage collector can introduce pauses in your program's execution as it performs its cleanup operations. That's why we do not use Python in game development. Imagine your teammates said the opponent is 1 HP and Python decided to take out garbage, but it may work in your favor. Whereas in C++, you have to mention the type at the declaration. And because of this, memory layout is known at compile time. So there's no need to check types at runtime, which allows direct memory access without additional layers and ensures a continuous flow. It's true that C++ has features that allow certain operations to happen at runtime. However, even with these dynamic capabilities, C++ developers still use it as a statically typed language. Because first, when C++ developers started learning C++, they used to hate themselves. But now they hate C++ more and using C++ as statically typed is the only way to punish both of them together. Jokes aside, C++ has features like automatic memory management with smart pointers and raw pointers, and we use auto management in applications where safety is a big concern and the project contains huge numbers of code lines. For instance, multi-threaded applications where resource management is critical. But C++ is generally used in high performance tasks or we can say continuous high performance requiring tasks like games, trading systems, or risk management tools. Using these automatic capabilities typically comes with performance overhead, and they are not very memory friendly. So C++ is mostly used as statically typed, but in some use cases like serialization, deserialization, or generic containers, which are needed to store arbitrary types, or sometimes when integration with dynamic languages is needed. While talking about memory management, one term you have heard a lot is heap, which is a region of memory that a program can allocate and deallocate. At the low level, a raw memory allocator ensures that there is enough room in the private heap for storing data. But the interesting thing is that these memory allocators are written in the C language, so in the end you will find C as the main memory manager in both languages. That's all for today. Thank you for your time.